Lucy on Gears. Well, it's getting chilly and we all seem to get very hungry in the cold weather. So today on my diocese double D's, I'm featuring a chef. Midlands born and raised Jackie Cameron is head chef at Hartford House, a five-star boutique hotel in Moy River. Jackie graduated from the Christina Martin School of Food and Wine in 2001 and started working at the Mount Grace Country House and Spa. For the past 10 years, Jackie has been reaping the rewards of her commitment to her career. Under her guidance, the Hartford House Restaurant, having achieved national top 10 status four times in recent years, is mentioned regularly in magazines such as Food and Home, Taste, Eat Out and House and Leisure, and has achieved many accolades, including Top 10 Eat Out, American Express Platinum Fine Dining Program and People Choice Awards. Jackie has the distinction of being one of Victor Strugo's three most favorite women chefs and was voted by South African Tourism as one of the top 10 young South African chefs. Wow. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Today we're chatting to Jackie, who is actually in Germany at the moment. Uh, hello, Jackie. Aha, uh-huh, how are you? We are awesome. How's Germany? Oh, it's stunning weather here. Yeah, very different to Moy River, I might add. Yeah, why do you want to live in Moy River? Let's be honest. I mean, it's a nice, <laughs> it's a nice, it's a nice place and all. But my goodness, we got the whole of Africa, and you want to live in a place where you just don't know what the weather's going to do. Oh no, we sometimes laugh the joke that we can sometimes have like five seasons in one day. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy. I think this morning it was minus five. Whoa! And I'm sitting in conditions at the moment in Germany at 20 degrees. Nice. Oh my goodness. What are you doing in Germany? Um, well, you know, I'm here 10 years ago when I started at Hartford. Um, I met a couple, Rainer and Gabby Kirschka. They were guests at Hartford. And we've kept in close contact over the years, kind of ever since. And I'm here at the moment celebrating our 10 years of knowing each other. My oh, parents wow. call them my adopted German parents. Stunning. <laughs> Jackie, you've achieved, yeah. you've achieved so much at such a young age. What initiated your interest in food and encouraged you to pursue a career in food? Oh, I think I've still got so much more to achieve. Um, my grandfather had his own butchery in Peter Marisburg. And both my grandmothers just loved cooking. My mother as well. I think just everything happened around the dining room kitchen table. And it really was just something that came so naturally to me because of the environment that I grew up in. And it was really just a natural progress for me to kind of go after school. I was brought up in a family that without hard work, you don't achieve anything. So that's hence why chefing. There's definitely quite a bit of that. That's awesome. And who's been your inspiration and idol in your career? Mm, there's been so many different people for completely different reasons. Um, I mentioned, you know, my parents, the high standard, never ever wanting to disappoint them. And then it's the both the international and the local chefs have been all so warm and supportive to me. You know, I spend so much time with the guests. All, well, pretty much so all foodies around I have truly gained from. Um, on informal chats, I've um, learned so much from, from all the people that are around me on a general day-to-day basis. I was reading, when I was reading up about you, you've traveled so much. Um, what's been your favorite destination that you've visited cuisine-wise? Oh, this is so difficult to answer. Can only be <laughs> um, Italy. Sydney, I would say, <laughs> pardon? Can only be Italy. <laughs> um, uh, I actually went to Italy for lunch once. Very, very <laughs> extravagant. I was oh, okay. In Switzerland. <laughs> we just kind of, we just kind of went over the border, but so I need to go back. Um, but I think uh, Sydney, I was just astounded by the high quality. It doesn't matter where you where we went to eat. Um, Spain, just the level of creativity was just so inspiring. Um, if I looked at meals. Um, and in restaurants, I've been very lucky to have eaten in some of the top restaurants. Um, uh, Al Bulli in Spain, um, fair on his creativity, he's just a true genius. I've pulled so much from different chefs. Um, Fact Duck and Bray, I think the desire to get back into my kitchen to reflect on my childhood memories was kind of that desire just overwhelmed me. 
And recently, Noma, I went to in Cape, uh, Copenhagen, um, and he just really kind of highlights local flavors. Um, and I've always been crazy and honed in on local flavors at Hartford, but I think I've just taken it to the complete next level. Ja- Jackie, I hate to butt in here, and I'm sorry I'm butting in on your double Ds. It's Ian speaking. How are you? You're very well in yourself. Ian. Yeah, I'm so good. I- I'm just double taking. As you said, you've been to El Bulli. I mean, it's closed now. Uh, and I'm, I'm. I know we were one of the last meals. <laughs> oh, really? Seriously? Was it? Was it that yeah. special? Was it just insane? It was. Um, I like I said, I've just eaten in some of the, the more a lot of the top restaurants in the world, and you can understand he is a genius. Um, yes, he has pretty much so forty um, head chefs behind him. He's got a great team, but in, in one restaurant, from, you know, going to that. Pardon? In one restaurant, 40, 40 head chefs in one restaurant. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the kind of caliber of yeah. chefs that he's having working behind him. You know, he's got the top class. And um, it was just an unbelievable experience on, on all levels. I think we had 47 courses. <laughs> wow. um, and just everything was just mind-blowing. I just quickly want to ask you, I know it's not your bag, but, 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 but in terms of molecular gastronomy and that experimental stuff that, that you've had, why is there no restaurant or no chef in South Africa that is that has taken that on? Because you can't use the excuse that there's no one good enough. There are plenty of good cooks and chefs in this country. Do you think it's just something that hasn't caught on because uh, South Africa is not ready for it yet? There are the yeah, there are the different chefs. For instance, um, I know a few years back, um, Richard Carstens honed in on it quite a lot, um, and then all of us kind of bring hints into our food here and there. I think South Africans in general, you've got to you've got to put food out that people want to, you know, eat, you know, just as a South African kind of mentality. They really want to have a good plate of food yeah. and feel as though they've eaten. So you're bringing in that creativity through each of the courses, but not creating an entire plate of deconstructed molecular gastronomy. Yeah, sure. So it's just really getting a balance that we've got to be very careful in um, restaurants in South Africa. So there is, there is definitely chefs that are doing it. Nice, Ian. <laughs> Quite the food yourself. Uh, Jackie, you've also now got your own cookbook <laughs> available. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yes, that's Jackie Cameron Cooks at Home. My publishers are Penguins. And um, yeah, you can buy it at any good bookstore or online. And it's me just stepping into my home kitchen. I'm desperately trying to get people back into their home kitchens. Um, I'm not trying to prove to the world that I know how to cook. I'm just wanting them to get into their home kitchens because I feel if the standard, if people are cooking better at home, they expect a better standard of food in restaurants and it kind of uplifts the entire industry. So my book is, I feel, like the how-to, go-to recipe book, um, a cookbook one can trust. Um, yeah. Uh, Jackie, do you have like, do you have a signature dish that, that people come to Hartford House in, in the Midlands specifically for? I think in this day and age, you know, gone are the times of signature dishes because food is just changing so, so quickly. I have um, a basic understanding that everything that is eaten at Hartford, um, if you had a blind tasting, you would be able to depict what is on the plate. So it's really just highlighting the flavors as much as, um, as, much as possible. Um, and then we honing in on KZN local flavors um, more than anything else. In my recipe book, um, you must get it. <laughs> I will. Um, there's just, uh, <laughs> um, it's, yeah, so in my recipe book, there's uh, on breakfast side, when I'm mentioning about this kind of blind tasting and being able to depict and be able to taste, because I think so, I think it's just completely pointless creating a dish, even at home, putting together a simple salad, but you actually can't taste the ingredients that are in your salad. Um, so I've got a blueberry flapjack recipe on the breakfast side, mm. and that just oozes blueberryness, and it goes with a dollop of whipped cream and crispy. Um, I use Dargal Valley bacon, but really, really crispy, streaky um, bacon, and it just brings picks up on the kind of sweet and savoury flavours that I, you know, use so often. I never really do anything too overly sweet. And it comes back to, we do a five course at Hartford every evening. And most of my desserts are sweet and savory combinations. 
to get a beautiful balance in the menu. Wow. This is the recipe that you were going to tell us about. You've sent it through to us and everyone can look at it yes. on our website. Yeah, can you just tell us a bit more about it? What goes into it? Any special techniques? Um, yeah, I think more, more than anything, it's the basis of doing things properly. So if you have a flapjack, um, it's, and if it's going to be a blueberry flapjack, make sure that you've got more than enough blueberries, like I said, to like ooze that blueberryness. And um, it's going to be going with a blueberry coulis. So that just enhances that and it just adds a kind of balance to, to the crumpets. I actually have friends in um, Cape Town that I go to and I always make these crumpets with little Haley. And, uh, you know, she loves it, we love it. And it's like going back to cooking with families in kitchens and making it a celebration more than a task. That's awesome. So have you, are you going to make a TV show? My sister's on TV. <laughs> um, yeah, I was really... I stuttered at, at saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> Watch the space then. <laughs> yeah, pretty much so. Yeah, I think it's, it's... it's. I'm just, like I said earlier, I'm not trying to prove to the world I, I can cook. Hopefully, I've already done that at Hartford. But it's it's more a desire um, to, for, for more people, more families to be experiencing what I experienced as a child because I just have so many fond memories in the kitchen. Awesome. That is awesome. I just want to say one more thing, one more question. Sorry. You recently also entered the world of fashion and you've designed an awesome um, chef's range. Where can people check this out and, and order if they'd like to? Yeah, it's a, I've started with a female chef range and that was pretty much my mom and I sitting down um, over a glass of wine one evening and decided to design this female range. I'm working with a local KZN um, manufacturer and I just wanted to, you know, spend so much time with guests to be presentable. And, um, yeah, you can go onto my website, which is www.jackiecameron.co.za and you go onto my uniform page and order directly and I'll send it via post. Excellent. That's awesome. Thank you so much for chatting to us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And enjoy the rest of your time in Germany. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. I'll, I'll see you the beginning of July. We'll come to the Hartford for a meal. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> All right. Cheers, Jackie. <laughs> Okie dokes. Okay. Bye. Cheers. Bye. At the next intersection, turn on Gears with Sasha Martinengo. Weekdays from 12 to 2 p.m. Central African time.